Yeah, praise God this morning time. You know, we know that uh, last Sunday uh, I was mainly focusing on um, uh, the uh, the youth and the kids of our church, especially I was uh, talking about the title called, um, I mean, Christian Youth in a Compromising World. Christian Youth in a Compromising World last week. And today, uh, for the whole congregation and uh, as we have the Holy Communion also, uh, I'm going to talk about the 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 uh, a, per, a particular title which is almost related to the uh, last Sunday message and also but at the same time the content is very I mean different and we are going to look into that and uh, we'll be observing uh, the the Holy Communion also this morning and the title is uh, uncompromised uh, church in a compromised world from Revelation chapter two verses thirteen and fourteen okay so. Uh, the title is Uncompromised Church in a Compromised World. That's why we are talking about the title of 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 the title Sambandhuniyame. Okay. So, a church, the Christian church, which God is planning, is that, you know, the church, the Christian church must be uncompromised, even though the world is compromising. The world is compromising. So, um, last Sunday, I was mainly, I told you that I was mainly focusing on the youth of a church and uh, uh, I was encouraging them to be away from the worldly things and uh, all the I mean compromising system of this world but today you know when we look into this particular title we understand especially from Revelation chapter 2 uh, verses 13 and 14 it says that very clearly that about the the church at uh, Pergamos okay the church at Pergamos and when we study about that we understand that the word compromise uh, has got an important meaning in connection with the Christian church. And uh, the reason, you know, there are I mean, some of the phrases or some of the words that we are using always to, um, to compensate with the word, uh, I mean, compromise. Even in Malayalam and Hindi also, in English also, we are using that word many times that, uh, you know, English Eh? English, eh? English, India, and the other, eh? Janade, eh? Chodona, le, the Goparatile, eh? I would tell it. And then I got no Yarik, okay. And when English, what we say? Let it be. Eh? Let it be, whatever. Okay? So, you know, we are not thinking about that. And you know, sometimes we are saying that, okay, let it be. Hmm? Adangana, Narnota, Corpon Villa, Sara Villa. Okay? So, we are taking some of the things very simply. And we are saying that, okay, uh, it's not a problem. No problem. Let it happen. Let it happen. You know, so gradually what happens, you know, many of the things that which is in the world and the worldly system that is coming inside the church and church also is becoming a compromised church. Okay. So that's the reason I was uh, just thinking about talking about the main topic that there should be a church, a Christian church, which is uncompromised in a compromised world and we know that there are mainly two kinds of churches are there like you know universal church is there and the local church is there okay so the universal church when, when we study about the universal church i mean no world or no power of the world can uh, touch or no power of world can uh, destroy the 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 power of the universal church because uh, bible very clearly says that and uh, jesus said that okay what is that when um, uh, uh, I, I'm building my church, right? I'm building my church and no powers of Hades or no power, uh, gates of Hades can destroy it. So, the universal church is always strong and the universal church cannot be destroyed by any power of this world. By any power of this world. At the same time, there is, there is a chance and there is a possibility that every local church must be very, 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 
amen amen uh, what is that uh, you can say I'm very serious about the things that that which is happening in the church in a local church you know there are there are more possibilities for a local church local church means the the the, the people the believers those who are attending in the church when they can be uh, compromised with the with the world and worldly systems so that's the reason i told you that the universal church is there that is founded by god and nothing can happen to the new universal church the church is there at the same time you know there are local churches in different places different cities so there are many chances that the local church can be can be compromised or can be destroyed by the influence of the world or influence of the city or influence of the society or the worldly systems of this world i mean so that's the reason i am just talking about you know uh, when we think about the the example as a pergamos church okay uh, you read this verse maybe uh, uh, revelation chapter 2 verses 13 and 14 um, uh, one of you can read in uh, with mike yeah yeah i know where you live where satan has his throne yet you remain true to your to my name you do not renounce your faith in me not even in the days of anip and to pass my faithful witness wh- who was put to death in your city where satan lives nevertheless i have a few things against you there are some among you who hold the teaching of balam who taught balak to entice the israelites to sin so that they ate the food sacrificed to idols and committed immor- immorality okay somebody can read it in malayalam also malayalathil avadum vaichana madhi enodu undu satanna simhasana ullayada ennu naan ariyunnu nee enne nee ende naama murave pidichirikkunna pidichirikkunnu ningalude idayil satan parkunna idathu thanne parkunna idathu thanne ende saakshiyum vishwasthunumaya അന്തിപ്പാസിനെ കൊന്ന കാലത്ത് പോലും നീ എങ്കിൽ വിശ്വാസ വിശ്വാസം നിഷേധിച്ചിട്ടില്ല എങ്കിലും നിന്നെ കുറിച്ച് കുറിഞ്ഞോന്ന് കുറ്റം പറവാനുണ്ട് ഇസ്രയേൽ മക്കൾ വിഗ്രഹാർപ്പിതം തിന്നേണ്ടതിനും ദുർനടപ്പ് ആചരിക്കേണ്ടതിനും അവരുടെ മുമ്പിൽ ഇടർച്ച വയ്പ്പാൻ ബാലാക്ക് ഉപദേശിച്ചു കൊടുത്ത ബലയാമിന്റെ ഉപദേശം പിടിച്ചിരിക്കുന്നവൻ അവിടെ നിനക്കുണ്ട് about the church at pergamos okay the church is pergamos and god is appreciating the church at pergamos in verse 13 and we are reading that even though there was a throne of satan and they were filled with the satanic temple and the worship initially the church at pergamos were holding fast the name of god okay so we will go to the next uh, i mean slide yeah so there are many appreciations appreciations given to the church at pergamos so god is giving many things about and god is talking about the church at pergamos that the pergamos church was a great church and it was a good church and there are many things to appreciate about the church at pergamos okay there are many things you know even though we read there even though there was a throne of satan and the city was filled with fill with the satanic temple and the worship you know in initial time the church has been holding fast the name of god even in the midst of the persecution they did not deny or renounce god's name even though there were persecutions even though there were many people were dying and i mean making the martyrdom we understand that those people the churches pergamos the people of god i mean even in the midst of the persecution they did not deny or renounce the god's name and again we read there many became martyrs but they stood firm in the initial time you know there are many people especially one one name which is given there it was antipas okay who was antipas okay the antipas was one of the ministers of pergamos church in the in the time of uh, i mean domitian uh, emperor so while the dominic domitian emperor was ruling over the roman i mean uh, uh, city roman i mean country we understand this man antipas one of was, was one of the 
ministers of uh, Pergamos church. And what happened was, this Domitian emperor, he told him, in, during the time of the persecution, he, I mean, told, uh, I mean, Antipas that, I mean, I'm going to kill you if you want to deny, renounce, or if you want to deny the name of Jesus now, I will, I mean, I mean, leave you alone. But at the same time, if you are not ready to renounce the name of Jesus, I will, I will, I mean, uh, I will kill you now itself, and uh, there is no more life for you. And he said, the Antipas said, no, 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 I cannot renounce the name of Jesus because he is my, I mean, strength and Jesus is my savior and Jesus is my, I mean, a Lord and I accepted Jesus as my personal savior. I cannot, I mean, leave and I cannot renounce the name of Jesus. Then the Domitian emperor said, yes, I am going to, I mean, uh, uh, burn you live. And he was born live. Antipas was born live. So understand one thing. You know, even though during the time of the persecution of Antipas, like Antipas in a corner, there was a Samet to poem over Angan Arno. Kartam and Namate, oh, report of which we should seek another iron than Anna, Namalada Vaikin. Hallelujah. Even though, I mean, you were going through the persecution initial in the initial stage of the, uh, the Pergamos church. Even though they were going through the persecution, they were always, I mean, holding fast the name of God. And they were, I mean, very firmly, I mean, believing in Jesus Christ and following the commandments of Jesus Christ. I mean, so that was the, I mean, appreciation which was given for the church at Pergamos. And again, we understand later, the Pergamos church became a compromising church. And there are many reasons for that. I mean, uh, you know, uh, what we are thinking this morning is, you know, how a church, an uncompromised church or, or a great church, a blessed church is becoming a compromised church. That is what uh, we are going to see. You know, there are many reasons which is written there, especially in uh, uh, verse 13 and in verse 14, we are reading many things. And the first thing is that, the next slide, Arvin, the influence of satanic powers and pagan worship system of Pergamos city, that, that was the one of the reasons that, that the church at Pergamos was influenced and it was compromising with the worldly system. You will see many of the things there. There is a Pergamos city and there are, I mean, some kind of temples, the, the, the famous four temples of that city. I'm just giving uh, these things from the, from the history also, then you will understand what was the situation of the, of the church at uh, Pergamos in those days. When, even though, when God in, 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 in Revelation chapter 2 verse 13, even though God was appreciating the church, you know, these people, the church at Pergamos was compromising and influenced by the world and world and world systems and all those things, then it became a compromised church. Okay? There are many reasons which is written there. The first reason is, it was influenced by the satanic powers and pagan worship system of the Pergamos city. You know, when I'm saying this, you have to understand one thing. You know, many a times in a Sadaram Pararunda, Namala Pasikinda Irikina Salatandonda. Eh, or Satana Shakti, on the Namala Chindikar, Selal Karanangan and Willanavar. Eh, Namala Pasikina Salat or Satana Shakti under Namala the Nedere, Pora Adana Madanere, Pratikan and the Kamala Parim, but Selal Karibari Mangan and Willa, Namala La Saif on the Varim. Okay, Pashe, if a Katana Badana and the Varana there. Then, what we are reading there in verse, I mean, verse, I mean, uh, Chapter 2, verse 13. But is that I know where you dwell, ah, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast my name. Okay, so listen, you know, why it is written that there was a satanic throne. Understand, you know, when we study about the city of Pergamos, I mean, what happened to the city? What happened to the church at Pergamos? There are many things which are written, especially see the Pergamos city there. And there is a temple of Zeus God. That means Zeus is a God. And Asclepius temple. And Dionysus temple. And Adina temple. Okay, There are four temples which is written there. Every temple has got uh, an importance in that particular place. Okay, Especially it is written in Revelation chapter 2 verse 13. There was a satanic throne. And because of the influence of the society and pagan worship system of those days, the Pergamos church also became a corrupted and compromised church. You know, even though, you know, the church was supposed to be strong, the church was supposed to be 
strong like the initial stage, but they were compromising with all kinds of worldly systems of that city. Okay, so understand one thing that you know. Even uh, I was just thinking. I was, I mean, hearing uh, uh, the the news of uh, our our country, this country, uh, the other day. Then uh, uh, I was hearing. I was getting a news that uh, there is there is a huge uh, satanic worship conference is going to happen in. Bo I mean, if you know that in Boston, yeah, you know the satanic worship, satanic temple, and their conference is going to happen in Boston city. You know, it is, uh, you know, there are many people, I mean, already signed up for that. You know, think about the youngsters of our, youngsters of our city, youngsters of our country. You know, there are many youngsters that are going and, and signing up to, uh, to attend for the conference of Satanic Temple. So, what about, what about our children? You know, why we are, I mean, talking about all these things? Because we are praying for our children, we are praying for our youngsters, so that they will be firm in faith, and they will, I mean, come more closer unto the name of the Lord, other than the satanic powers which is prevailing in the city. You know, think about these things, you know. I, you know, when, when I was preparing this message, you know, I was just thinking about the Boston city. Not about the, not only the Boston city. All the cities, all the states of our country. Then we have to pray for all of them. And that's the reason that we are praying every Wednesday for each state. I mean, think about these things, you know. The city, oh sorry, the, the, the Pergamos church was influenced and the Pergamos church was compromised with the city and the worship system of that city particularly you know the temple of Zion's God and you know you can think about that um, you know I'm giving some of the uh, I mean uh, uh, pictures of that Pergamos city and historical background with city and uh, just for your understanding that uh, I'm giving all those pictures okay so this city was a center of idol worship the city was a center of idol worship mainly there were four famous temples there Okay, the Zaius temple, the uh, Asclepius sent, I mean, uh, temple, and Dionysus sent, I mean, a temple, and Athena, I mean, God's temple. You know, uh, in uh, Acts chapter 17, verse 23, we are reading that when uh, Apostle Paul was uh, uh, traveling to um, Athens, uh, he found an altar without, uh, with an ins inscription. What was that inscription? Hmm? To an unknown God, right? to an unknown God. Okay. okay. So while he was uh, uh, traveling through that place, when he saw that, okay, there is a, there is a, there is a, uh, 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 there is an altar and uh, I mean, it is written, there is an, a writing or inscription written on the altar, which was to unknown God. Okay. Then Paul said, okay, I mean, about this God, I'm going to talk to you. Yeah. And then, History says that okay, I mean, he was the, the, the unknown uh, which was written there, the unknown God. Okay, you want to read that? Okay, Acts chapter 17, verse 23. Yeah, it was, it was, no, the history says that this, uh, I mean, unknown God's uh, temple or the altar was the Athena's, Athena's God's temple, you know. So, whatever it may be, so let, let us think about, you know, how the, the temple was there and how the, 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 what you can say, the pagan worship system was prevailing over the city of Pergamos. And I know that uh, we already studied about the book of Revelation, maybe, yeah, I meant maybe two, two years ago. And uh, we learned all those things. But at the same time, I'm just reminding you that, I mean, what was happening in the Pergamos city. I mean, and that should not happen in our church. That's the reason I'm reminding you all these things. And be, let us be firm in faith, and let us be—I mean, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, fruitfully, I mean, do something for the kingdom of God, and let's be faithfully, I mean, serve the Lord, uh, I mean, in the coming days. Hallelujah! You know, think about these things. You know, the famous hospital which was connected to the Pergamum God Temple Asclepius was God of Healing. You know, you will see that in the in the next uh, I mean slide. Yeah, think about this one. No, this temple was, I mean, in the name of a god or goddesses, you know, that was the Asclepius, I mean, god. And that god was known as the healing god, the god of healing. Okay, and you can see that it is known as the city of serpent. 
okay the city of pergamos was known as the city of serpent no city of serpent you will see that uh, this uh, um, uh, you know the pictures there you, you can see in you know in uh, chapter uh, revelation chapter 2 verse 13 it is written that uh, you are living where there is a throne of satan where there is a pishajinde satande simhasanam ulla sthalathana ningal thamasikkunnathu avadu ezhichirikkunnathu alle verse 13 le okay so that simhasanam is there that throne is there okay so and again you can see another thing you know the anu more adin adin mumbathe nitte yes uh, yeah you see here here you know you can see there you know that the, the sacrifices are happening there you know in in pagan temple the sacrifices are happening in that particular place and that is known as the throne of satan there okay the throne of the pagan god and that is known as the throne of satan and the sacrifices for the for the uh, for the gentile gods and goddesses which is happening in that particular place and also and also that place and that uh, i mean uh, a temple the asclepius temple is known as the temple of healing you know the people they were believing that the, if the people are coming there and they will be healed so that was the belief system of that day and that's the reason you can see the next one next slide albin so this one and this one the two uh, pictures you see there you can see that there is a, there is a there is a rod and uh, uh, which is uh, uh, wrapped with a uh, wrapped with a snake picture okay so i think uh, the same picture that uh, i mean the the medi- what is that medical institutions are using now also okay that might be coming from that i mean uh, that background maybe okay so you know they were thinking that okay of okay, if, if you are believing in this picture or if you are believing in this god then you will get healing that is the reason that they were worshiping that and they are i mean giving that emblem that that symbol for the medical institutions even today you know that comes from that background and let us understand one thing these were the were the main thing that we are understanding and that's the reason it is written that there is a throne of satan and that shows that influence of satanic powers were prominent in the city hallelujah so first of all we understand the pergamos city and pergamos church was influenced by the gentile or pagan worship system of the city you know this is very important to understand the first thing that how the the, the temple of god how the, the the christian church is compromising with the world you know think about this you know we know that our our church is existing among the satanic powers okay our church is existing and surviving i mean over the satanic influences and the powers of this world and the city you know we understand from the bible that every city there is a satanic power there is a sit- i mean satan you 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 are reading in uh, ephesians that okay, the principles of satan and the powers of satan and all those things okay the powers of the air and all those things okay so when we read about that to understand that we have we are surrounded with the satanic powers but our church and the, the believers of god the children of god they are supposed to i mean fight against the satanic powers and we are supposed to fight against the influences of the satanic powers and the worship system of the city and we will be victorious hallelujah and that's what we are understanding here that i mean why we are praying why you are taking fasting i mean we are praying nammal endra prarthikkunna nammal endra vosikkunna chumada vosikkalla chumada prarthikkalla i mean ee satane shaktigal ellam i mean nammada city kega thollappol nammada sabaya kartha soochikkanadinayitte devam strong aayi nirthanadinayitte nammal aathmaarthama devathode prarthikkunna i mean fight cheyna prarthana adu vas prarthana adu parayunnathu hallelujah how many of you understand i don't know how many of you understand the power of the fasting and prayer hallelujah we have been listening uh, from that pastor adam yesterday you know we have a power in the fasting prayer amen. amen we have a power in our prayer when a christian is praying when a child of god is praying in the presence of god i mean he understand that god is going to work for for them and god is in miracles and he is going to do the miracles in the city hallelujah that's the reason that we are praying for the city we are praying for every state of united states hallelujah so let us pray that when god will do some miracles in our city also and god will defeat the power of the satan of our city and and our church will be victorious in the coming days 
Hallelujah. So for the first thing that we understand that Pergamos church initially it is a good church. It was an appreciated church. You know, God was appreciating the church that he was saying that. Okay, your church is a very good church. I mean, you were, I mean, holding fast my name even though you were going through the persecution. Even though many of your, I mean, uh, friends and many of your ministers were martyred. I mean, you were standing firm. Even though, I mean, you were having many, many kinds of uh, attack from the, I mean, a uh, city. Even though the throne of Satan is there. Even though you are going through the persecution, you were holding my name very well, very firmly, and you did not renounce my name. That's where we are reading there. At the same time, right after that, maybe in the next sentence, in the next sentence, God is giving a warning that you are compromising with the world, and you are compromising with the worldly system and the pagan system of your own city. Hallelujah. And the second thing, the second thing, we are going to see that. Yeah. This is the second thing, the second, second reason that we are reading from that particular verse. It is, let us read that verse maybe, uh, chapter 2, verse 14. <clears throat> yeah. There are some among you who holds the teaching of Balaam, mm -hmm. who taught Balak to entice the Israelites mm -hmm. to sin, so that they ate food sacrificed to idols mm -hmm. and committed immorality. Mm -hmm. Likewise, you also have those who hold to the teachings of Nicolaitans, and that's enough. Okay, thank you. Uh, see, there. But I have few things against you, leh. You know, like, kuchhe, korchhe guttam parayanonda. Yi korchhe guttam ana vade prasna. Chire parayanonda. Shad vilju prasna. There are. Mm, uh, I know, and God said, I know, I know that you are strong, and you initially you are okay, you are doing everything okay. And but I have a few things against you because you have there some who hold the teachings of Balaam. So the teaching of Balaam or the Balaamism, no, you can you can call it as a Balaamism. What is Balaamism? Okay, teaching Okay, Okay, so you know you the Balamism. So what is that actually? You know, you, you will, I mean, you will see, I mean, many of the verses from that, that particular portion that you will understand that. When you go to Numbers chapter 22, we are not reading that portion, okay. We have the Holy Communion also, so we will come to the point very quickly. You know, when you read uh, Numbers chapter 22 to 25, okay, uh, uh, three, four chapters, you will understand what was Balaamism or what was the doctrine or teaching of Balaam. Okay, the, we know the history of that, I mean, I mean, portion, and we know that the Balaam was the prophet from a Gentile background, and he is known as the perverted prophet. He is known as the perverted prophet. Okay, so we are going to look into what was the second reason, what was the second reason the Pergamos church was compromising with the worldly system. Okay, why this church, the better church was becoming a compromised church. What was that? The Pergamos church was in influenced by the Balaamism. Okay, so let us see what are the, what are the, I mean, uh, uh, what are the teachings of Balaam and what are the, I mean, effect of Balaamism, effect of Balaam's teaching. You know, we will see what the first one is there, the love of money and wealth. Okay, the love of money and well, this is the main thing that we are also, you know, many of the believers, many of the ministers are, you know, when they are going after the wealth and money, their spiritual life is destroyed, right? Hmm? We can see there in every churches, there are people always running after money and are running after wealth. Man, ministers destruction. Okay? So, we do not know how they are destroy, man, destroying their spiritual life. Man, so, they are always focusing on the wealth. They are always focusing on money. You know, when they are focusing on money or wealth, their spiritual life is spoiled. 
Amen. But when we are focusing on God and when we are focusing on the word of God and we are ready to obey the word of God, commandments of the word of God, we will be successful in the presence of God. And we will, I mean, success our spiritual life also in, in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Otherwise, there is a great danger that which is going to happen for those people, those who are running after the money and the wealth. That same thing happened with Balaam also. You know, Balak, the, the Moabite king was calling Balaam, you come with me and just curse the people of Israel. No? First of all, he was asking to God, God, should I go there? Should I go and curse those people? And God said, no, 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 don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. You know, last time also, last week also I said, you know, the same thing had happened with Balaam also. You know, Balaam was asking God, God, should I go there? Eh? Should I go there? Should I go there? God said, no, 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 don't go, don't go, don't go. Because that is the people of God and that is my people. You don't go there. You, if you go there, you will have to curse them. You don't go there. Then after that, again and again, when Balaam was asking, Balaam was praying in the presence of God, and God said, then you go. Then you go. But whatever I am giving in your mouth, that only you speak to those people. Okay? I will give you something and you can speak to that. And we, 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 we discussed about uh, all those things, that the, the blessings and the benefits that uh, the offer, which was uh, I mean, put before uh, the Balaam uh, in the last week. We already discussed about that. Okay, even though, I mean, he knew that, I mean, I, he is not supposed to go there because of the compulsion he went there and he was looking after the money and the wealth and we understand what is the, what is the reason that, uh, that Balaamism or that doctrine of Balaam was uh, mingling with the Moabite, uh, the, the people of Israel, they were mingling with the Moabite people. You know, let's read Numbers chapter 25 verses 1 to 3. Numbers chapter 25. Verses 1, 2, 3. Yeah. Hmm. The sacrifice of their God, hmm. their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel yoked himself to Baal of Peor, hmm. and, the, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Ah. And the Lord said to Moses, oh, That's enough. Okay, thank you, sister. So Israel get, ah, what is it? Sithimil Parkumbo Janam, Moabi Strigulamai Parasangan Tudangi, our Janate Tangalude, Devan Maruda Beligal Kavilikugayam, Janam Bachicha, our Devan Maria Namaskriki and Chido, Israel Balpayur Nod Cherna, Yahoboda Kobam, Israel in the Nere Jualichu. See, you know. Actually, what is happening there, you know, because of the doctrine, you know, we understand that after the, after the death of uh, this Balaam, there arose a, arose a, I mean, doctrine which is called as the, do, the, the doctrine of Balaam, the doctrine of Balaam, and he was insisting the people, and he was insisting the people of Israel to love the money, and uh, to also to, I mean, for getting the wealth, and mingling with the Moabite, uh, I mean, I mean uh, ladies, and unholy alliance were there, and marriage with Moabite by people and also I mean Jews were offered to sacrifice the pagan gods in their midst. You know the, the Balaam was insisting the people of Israel and you go there and you can I mean offer the sacrifices for the pagan gods. There is no I mean there is nothing wrong if you are sacrificing for the for the pagan gods. You know, this is the teaching of Balaam. He said that okay people of Israel there is no problem you can also mingle with the the Gentile people. You can also mingle with the, the pagan people. You can also sacrifice, the, offer the sacrifices to the pagan gods and goddesses. There is no problem at all. That was the teaching. That was the doctrine of Balaam. And he was insisting them for them. And also in Numbers chapter 31 verse 16 we are reading there. There is an advice and counsel of Balaam. The advice and counsel of Balaam. Because of the advice, because of the counsel of Balaam, the people of Israel were destroying and they, are, they were mingling, they were compromising with the system of this world. And again, 
We are reading there, the council of Balaam led Israel to idol worship and immorality. You know, in, in Numbers chapter 25 also, and in Revelation chapter 2 verse 14 also, we are reading there that because of the compulsion and because of the counsel of Balaam, you know, the people of Israel were led to idol worship and immortality. And in Numbers chapter 25 verse 9, we are reading that, two, I mean, 24,000 Israel people died by plague because of this Balaamism. The reason is, you know, Balaam, the doctrine of Balaam was insisting and compelling and the counsel and advice of Balaam was insisting they, they the people of Israel and they were all destroyed. I mean, again, Let's read 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 15. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 15. Yeah. Hmm. They have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam, ah. son of Bezer, who loved the wages of wickedness. Yeah. Uh, 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 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 14. Uh, sorry, 15. Yeah. It says that in Malayalam, our near Vari Vita Teti Bayor in the Maganai Bileam in the Vadil Nadano. So there is a perverted way, right? There is a perverted way. Okay, Vadi Teti Ula Yatra. Okay. So when the people of God, when the children of God, they are perverting from the right way of God, you understand there are some influences of the world and there are some influences of the satanic powers from outside and we are supposed to be in a right way in a proper way following jesus and jesus's footsteps amen so that's what we are understanding there and also we read there that he allowed the wages of unrighteousness i needed a coolie i need a coolie i need a coolie i need a coolie i Okay, I'm going to trip around the Righteous Hallelujah. That's what we are reading there. Balaam was seeking for the, I mean, uh, for the wealth and uh, wages of the unrighteousness. I needed a coolie. I mean, I to boy. Again, in Jude chapter, Jude 11, we are reading that there is a work of deception from Balaam. Jude 11. Okay. How many chapters are there in Jude? Only one chapter. Okay. So only, uh, only verses are there. There is no chapter itself. I mean, there is only verses. Okay. So 11th verse we are reading there. You know, there is a, there is a work of deception also. You know, what happened because of this? Finally, we read that the church of Pergamos became a compromised church with the, um, and the world. I mean, this is, these are the reasons that we are understanding. Even though God was appreciating the church at Pergamos because of two, mainly two reasons. Men, the church became the compromised church. The church became compromised church. You know, I was just thinking about the strategies of Satan. About the city of, uh, 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 sorry, so the church at Pergamos. The first strategy was, you know, they were saying that, okay, when we persecute the church, the church will be destroyed. You know, the, 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 the satanic, uh, I mean, uh, thought was it is, it, is, it, uh, it was, the, and they were saying, okay, let us persecute the church. You know, even though they were persecuting the church, we understand the church was growing. Initially, the church was growing. You know, and the reason first of all, persecute. Persecute here. Church in a persecute him. I mean, our Yarichu, oh, he persecution because of the persecution. I mean, no more churches, no more Christianity, no more Jesus, no more Christians. 
I mean, everything is going to end by the persecution. Okay, but what ha actually happened? The church was growing. Okay, persecution. I can do it. Do church grow? Do you know? Every time, every time, even from the from the first century itself, you can see that even today also we understand that there are many places uh, that the Christians are attacked and many churches are destroyed. You know, even though the churches are destroyed, I mean, there are many churches are growing. And churches are growing. More people are added into the church, and more people are taking baptism. They are coming to the church. You know, even in India, think about India. Even North India and Karnataka and all those uh, places, all those I mean, uh, states. I mean, there are lot of I mean, persecutions are happening. At the same time, there are more people added into the church. Even yes, even the last, the other day also was I mean, talking to the the, the pastors in uh, I mean, different uh, I mean, states of India. They were saying, yes, pastor, there are persecutions. Many churches are destroyed, and there is a there is a bill conversion bill also is passed there, and they are saying that okay, there is no more conversion. You cannot convert any person from one religion to another religion. I mean, all these things are there. You know, they are not permitting uh, the people to to worship in a in a house or in a in a in a, a rented hall or somewhere, and they have to have a own building, the church building with the cross and everything, and with all the facilities. Then only they will agree that okay, this is a church. Otherwise, you have no uh, permission to, I mean, worship in a house or in a in a rented hall or somewhere. You know. So even though in the midst of them, the churches are growing, the people are growing, and they are strong and they are becoming strong. So this is the first strategy that Satan, even today also, he is going to apply. You know, persecuting church, persecuting church. If that is not working, then the second one. You know that. What is that? The second strategy. Ah, influencing them to compromise with the world. Hmm? Persecute either on the Sabbath, Nashi, Chibo, and the Lingre, Satan, Data, the Rudian, the Riamo, Porta Loga, the Rula, Sambanga, like India, Sabaka, Toto, Gunduana, if I influence either focus either, I will compromise either, I will not ship again, but to Alpanar Nodrika. Other than the number of Pratik and the Yosan and the Regato. We are going to pray for that. Even, you know, even though there are struggles in our lives, even though there are persecutions in our churches, I mean, we know that the church is growing. At the same time, I mean, Satan is using the second strategy. The second strategy is that influencing the people of God. Just like Balaamism, just like Balaam, the doctrines of Balaam, I mean, influencing the people and taking them into the world and the worldly and the worldly system and everything. So many a time, you know, we understand in many of the churches today, I mean, the people are just joining with the worldly people. And they are always going for, uh, going for all the functions of the worldly people. I mean, what they are doing and the same thing is happening in our churches also. I mean, that's the reason that we are seeing that, okay, Satan is on work and he is always working at the same time. The people of God, we are not thinking about that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, understand one thing, the drifting away of the church from the presence of God is not happening instantly, but it is happening gradually. No? Step by step, step by step. You know, Balaam was not influencing the people of Israel instantly. I mean, within a, within a moment, he was influencing the people of Israel gradually. Gradually. Hallelujah. It takes time. It takes time. So this morning, let me encourage every one of you to be strong in faith. And let us pray, O oh Lord, hallelujah. Keep us and keep our kids, O oh Lord. Keep our youngsters, O oh Lord, in faith, O oh Father. Even though there are many things happening over the world. And even though there are many, I mean, I mean, bad things are happening. Many, I mean, satanic attacks are happening in the world, in the city. city. Hallelujah. We understand that God is there to protect the people of God. Hallelujah. 
Let us remember and let us pray. The next slide. I mean, let us remember and let's pray together. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. I mean, hallelujah. Let our church be separated from the world. Let us pray that, oh Lord, I mean, I need and we need our church to be separated from the world. Hallelujah. Let us all be influenced by the spirit filled I mean, worship. Hallelujah. Let us not be influenced by the worldly worship system. I mean, there are worldly worship systems are there in the world and city. But we are not supposed to be, I mean, I mean, adjoined with that. We are not supposed to be connected with that. But we are worshipping in truth and spirit. And we are not supposed to be influenced by the worldly worship system. Hallelujah. Let us not be compromised with the worldly, I mean, systems. Let us not be compromised with the worldly system. Hallelujah. And we know that the Holy Communion is given for the separated people. That's the reason that we are saying that, okay, I mean, the holy people are participating in the Holy Communion. As we have the Holy Communion, the Bible very clearly says that, I mean, it is not for all the people, those who are attending in the church. I mean, the Holy Communion is not absurd here for all the people, but the people, those who are coming to the presence of God, those who have, I mean, taken, I mean, I mean, Jesus as a personal Savior. It is only for the people, those who accepted Jesus as a personal Savior and the Lord. And for the people, those who have taken baptism, the immersion baptism in the name of Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. And the people, those who are, I mean, working for the Lord, waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. The people, those who are making themselves holy by the blood of Jesus Christ and with the word of God. Those people are supposed to participate in the Holy Communion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we were listening the word of God this morning. That hallelujah. I mean we are supposed to be separated from the world. We are not among. We are not. I mean one among the world. But we are separated from the world. The Lord has chosen us. And he has separated us from the world. And let the worldly things should not come inside the church. Let's all close our eyes in the presence of God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. How many of you are ready to pray for that? I mean, matter. I wish you would pray again. Let's pray for that. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. You know, we are reading in Luke chapter 18, verse 8. What is that? However, when the Son of Man comes, He will find faith on earth. Man, Karthav, where you born? Do you? Eh, Karthav, where? Ah, where you born? Same time, extra prayer la, vishwasan kanda thunna. Hallelujah. Adalay vakiyam. എങ്കിലും മനുഷ്യപുത്രൻ വരുമ്പോൾ ഭൂമിയിൽ വിശ്വാസം കണ്ടെത്തുമോ എന്ന് കർത്താവ് ചോദിക്കാം ഹലലൂയ നമുക്കും അത് തന്നെ നമ്മളോട് തന്നെ ചോദിക്കാം കർത്താവെ എൻ്റെ കർത്താവിൻ്റെ വരവാസനമായിരിക്കുക ഹോ ആ വിശ്വാസം എന്നിലകത്ത് അത്ര എത്രത്തോളം ഉണ്ടെന്നുള്ളത് നമ്മൾ തന്നെ ചിന്തിച്ച് നോക്കിയേ ഹലലൂയ മെനി ടൈംസ് വി ആർ യൂ വി ആർ ലൂസിങ് അവർ ഫെയ്ത്ത് ഇൻ ജീസസ് ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് മെനി എ ടൈംസ് മെൻ അവർ യങ്സ്റ്റേഴ്സ് ആർ ലൂസിങ് ദർ ഫെയ്ത്ത് ഇൻ ജീസസ് ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് ഹലലൂയ ആസ് ദർ ഗോയിങ് into the worldly systems as they are going into the society many a times they are mingling and they are compromising with the world hallelujah we understand the pergamos church i mean initially it was an appreciated church hallelujah god was appreciating the church at uh, i mean pergamos but because of many reasons the church became a compromised church Hallelujah. Because of the powers. Because of the influence of the powers of Satan. And we are reading about that Pergamos church that okay, there is a throne of Satan in the city. And that throne of Satan and that sacrifice and that worship and that power is influencing the church of Pergamos. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we need a, we need a, we need a fencing for our church of Father. Hallelujah. Yes, Master. How many of you can pray for every one of us? Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Keep us, oh, Lord. Keep us, oh, Lord. Keep us under your mighty wings, oh, Father. Hallelujah. Karthave, ee satane shakti gal kadiri yallam. Atma vil poradaan. Avishma daivatane kriba. Yalke taraname karthave. Ee logatane anirubar agadu jeevikyaan. Or separate title of sabiyan jeevikyaan. Karthave, nangala sahai kena metra verku prarthikyaan saadik. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Tudara Balava Sandara, Balabuda, Gasia, Balabalava Sandara. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Many times, you know, I mean, the worldly things and the worldly system, I mean, they are, I mean, desiring to come inside the church and they are trying to, I mean, persecute the church and they are trying to, I mean, I mean, persecute the church and they are saying, okay, through that way, I can destroy the church. Hallelujah. But if that is not working, um, he, he is going to influence the people of God. And he is going to I mean, make compromise with uh, the worldly things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Many a times, uh, I mean, that is happening, maybe unknowingly. Unknowingly happening. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But the Bible says that, okay, hallelujah, you are not supposed to renounce the name of God. Even though there are problems, even though there are suffering, even though there are persecution, you are not supposed to be renouncing the name of God. Rather, you are supposed to be in faith. You are supposed to be in firm in faith. Hallelujah. And saying that, oh Lord, we love you God. We love you, God. Lord, we thank you that uh, you came into my heart, oh Father. I mean, Lord, we thank you that you are my Lord. Lord, we thank you that you are my Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The separated people, the separated church, the separated Christians. Hallelujah. The strong Christians, I mean, who are making themselves holy by the word of God and the blood of Jesus Christ. They are going to participate in the Holy Communion this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us, I mean, let us have a word of prayer. Maybe a small word of prayer. I mean, short word of prayer this morning time. And we are going to pray. And we are going to, I mean, I mean, I mean continue the Holy Communion. I would request the brother, I mean, Cedric to lead us in prayer. I mean, according to the word of God. Meditating that word of God. And submitting us to the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah.